in, in the last year, there were two times that there was a very real chance I could have died. And I'm here. I couldn't be happy. So I got to tell you all this story. Let me date back a couple weeks. I uploaded a video. I said, I'm heading to Detroit. I'm on the way. The Gamer Saloon hit me up. Said they're hosting a $10,000 prize pool NBA 2K tournament. I said, I'm coming through. Troy Down was going to be there. Dirk the Caster. We have Crispy Flakes in there. So I was excited. Some of these guys I liked in the community. We get a chance to link up, shoot some videos, whatever. So I'm on the way. They play for the flight in the hotel. But last minute, Waleed tells me he also wants to come along. I'm like, Waleed, come through. But instead of driving his Chrysler 300, see, I said, drive my Honda Accord. It's a lot better on gas. So we decide. Waleed drives to Detroit. I fly to Detroit. He drops me off at the airport. So I leave my bags with him because I don't really want any carry on or any extra luggage. No check-in. I don't want to deal with that. So I get to Detroit before him, of course. Me and Troy didn't actually have the same flight. He had a connection in Toronto on his way to Detroit. So we get to Detroit, we take the Uber, we get to the hotel. Only a couple minutes pass by before the chaos begins. So Waleed calls me, says, yo, I'm stuck at the border because they saw my camera. For whatever reason, they think that Waleed needs a work visa to get into the United States. Which is weird, because if it was a work visa, I would need it, not Waleed. But every single time I'm in the airport, I explain to customs what I'm doing, uh, and then I just click B1 for temporary business when I'm getting my boarding pass, and I'm straight. I've never ever had to sign up for a work visa. Usually those are reserved for longer term things, like if I get a job at Tesla, or for example, the 2K League, and I have to go to LA, for example, to play a game, then yeah, I'm gonna need a work visa, that's an actual long-term job in the US. So it was weird, the reasons they were holding him up, it, they saw a camera and immediately, the, an alert went off in their brain and they're like, we can't let him through, we see a camera. Which like, I just got an iPhone X, well, he just got an iPhone X, they have wavy cameras on the iPhone, are you stopping everybody with iPhones now? Like, it, the logic just didn't clear up to me. I, there was a bunch of old guys there and maybe the, the, they saw a DSLR and immediately thought he must be a professional filmmaker. <laughs> but they, they might have a $3,000 camera. These professional films, they got hundred thousands of dollars for one camera, right? So anyway, there's just some confusion there. Waleed gets sent back from the border. He said that they were treating him like a criminal. They were fingerprinting him. Apparently they cupped his ball sack. It was, yo, but he told me in detail was very, very disturbing. And it all happened because he had a camera? Is that where we're drawing the line now? Is that is that where the real danger is in cameras? Come on, man. We really could have just booted up the camera, showed him the last video on there, and it would have said, yeah, this guy's talking about jump shots. You can let him through, man. We're just making fun of Mike Wang and Ronnie 2K. For those who don't know, Windsor and Detroit are on opposite sides of the Canadian and the US border. So I was on Detroit on the US side, and Waleed was in Windsor on the Canadian side. And so of course, since Waleed has my laptops, that day I was supposed to upload a Facebook video and a YouTube video, I said, I gotta go back, right? So I get in a taxi, there's a taxi near the hotel, and the, the situation just begins to escalate, man. The taxi driver is like a six-year-old black dude, right? He, he seems chill and cool, but his wife is there. Now, my dad was a cab driver. My mom has never been in the whip with him while he was doing his job. So off rip, an alert goes off. Now, I know a little bit about taxis, but not a lot of it. So my dad would always get like a new car every four years. He'd have to make sure everything was super clean. The car was straight. Like his papers were in order. Like it's a pretty rigorous process that they go through. And this is gonna provide context for what's about to just happen right now. Before I get in any ride in the US, I asked him if they take credit because I don't have American cash on me. And so he said yes, I get in the car, but in the middle of the ride, he says, can I see your credit card? And I go, mm, it's weird for me. In Canada, it is ludicrous to give somebody your credit card. It is almost unheard of. If somebody, if I went to Tim Hortons on the drive-thru and they said, give me your credit card, I'm driving off, right? If I go to St. Louis Wild Wings and they say, yeah, give me your credit card, we'll go in the back and pay for it, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. I'm not paying for anything if you're gonna take my car. Because they can just take pictures of your car and sell it off to the highest bidder. It's too suspect. But in the United States, anytime I've been to LA, New York, Arizona, DC, and now Detroit, they just take your car and then come back with it whenever they're done paying for it themselves. It's suspect. So I didn't feel comfortable with it, but I gave them the card. A couple minutes go by and I start asking questions like, yo, is everything okay? Yo, can I get my car back? And he starts asking me weird questions like, what's your zip code? If you're from Canada, we don't have zip codes, we have postal codes, but I don't tell him that. He doesn't need extra information. I just tell him, I don't know. What do you, what do you, what do you need it for, my guy? Like, you have my credit card, for no reason, by the way. Just give me the machine, and I'll pay for it myself. He doesn't do that. He starts asking me what my PIN number is on my card, and that's when I start to lose it. Not only is his wife in the car, he's asking suspect questions, and now he's been holding my card for over three minutes. I look in front of me, and if you guys have ever been in a taxi, they actually have their license plate on the back, 
and it said it expired two years ago. Now, my dad is a cab driver. I know they got rigorous rules. There's no way a taxi driver is driving around with an expired license for over two years. I take a picture of it, and immediately I tell him, yeah, no, don't worry, I can actually just hop in an ATM and get cash. Now, for those of you who don't know, generally speaking, Canadian cards don't give you American cash on American ATM. They usually get declined. I've never, I've been in New York, and I've been in LA plenty of times over the last couple years and never has my card worked in an ATM. But still, I told him drop me off at an ATM because I needed a way to get out the situation. So surprisingly, it worked. I don't know how I got the American cash, but I did. So I had money to pay him just in case he went berserk. But I called my bank. I said, cancel my shit immediately. So they canceled my credit card after a couple security questions. They're sending me a new one in seven to 10 business days. And so I feel like I had that situation handled. I told him I'll take it from here. And I was left off right by a duty-free store. So for those of you who've never been to the Ambassador Bridge, it's one big giant bridge that connects the Canadian side of the border to the US side of the border. It's not a bridge that you can walk on. You need a car to get through. And Walid had my car on the Canadian side of the border. So I'm in a dilemma. I called a couple guys I know in the area. I called a couple taxi companies. And after an hour and a half of just waiting, I finally got a guy who was willing to drive me over. It was a five minute drive for $100, but I said I'll take it because I'll lose even more money if I don't upload my Facebook and YouTube video. Hi guys, I'm having such a blast. I'm here at the duty free store. If you guys can see behind me is a giant bridge that I'm not capable of walking on. So I'm currently stuck, man. I'm having the time of my life. Not only am I gonna miss my YouTube upload, I'm gonna miss my Facebook upload, link in the description. And on top of that, uh, I also have to stream on Facebook. So it's, it's, I mean, there's a lot of fantastic stuff. Going. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to be at a Detroit Pistons game right now. And I have pretty good seats. I'm also gonna miss that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, guys, literally the best day of my life today. It's crazy. So after a dilemma, I get to the border and I also get sent back. So now me and Walid are both on the Canadian side of the border. We link up, I get in my car and we drive back to Toronto. I, I wish this is where the situation ended, all right? But it wasn't, it actually didn't even get started. I stream Fortnite for the night, Facebook link in the description if you guys wanna watch those. And then next morning I wake up super exhausted, but I tell Walid, yo, I told everybody I was gonna be at this event in Detroit, I can't not show up. And so I get up, we drive to Detroit again. It's a four hour drive to Detroit. So Waleed does the first two hours and then a blizzard starts to hit. And of course, it's my car. So Waleed's like, yeah, you gotta drive. I'm not driving in this blizzard. I say, okay. Now, there's a couple things you gotta know about my car. I'm on the way to this event and I wanna get there on time, but I have low profile tires and my car is lowered. So the, the space in between the top of my tire and the rim of the car is very small. So anytime there's water, like a lot of rain, or there's slush, or a lot of snow, or even like a pothole, there is a very real chance my car can spin out, the tire can flatten if it hits something too hard and bumps against one another. It's not really the safest car to drive, and I didn't even know that before I bought the car, but I learned that as I was driving the car. So anytime I drive, I'm always juking potholes and bumps things of that nature. So for two hours, I would almost lose control and then regain control. For any of you who have driven in snow before, you know, I usually, the safest way to drive is to drive on the tracks that the cars in front of you have created. So because people are driving in front of you and the, the snow hasn't been paved yet, it just makes sense to drive where they've driven. It's like when you're walking to school in snow, I'd much rather step where somebody else has already stepped so I don't mess up my, my kicks or my jeans or whatever the case is. So after a, a long treacherous journey, we finally make it to the border. This time, they're asking us a bunch of questions and they say, do you have anything in the vehicle that we should know about? And if you lie to them and they find out, you're in a whole load of trouble. So I, I'm trying to be honest. I say, yeah, I got a camera. And immediately, they go off again. They hear a camera, they're like, yep, yeah, stop your car, get inside, sit there for a minute. And we sat there for what felt like 45 minutes maybe, doing nothing. And they started to ask me all these questions. Now, the Gamer Saloon paid for the hotel and the flight, but they didn't give me any money past that. So they were saying I needed a work visa, but I'm like, but I don't because I'm not getting paid for this. It's, it's, it's not work. The content that I was gonna vlog there is for my own channel, but it's not contractually obligated by Gamer Saloon. I just wanna do it for myself. If I'm gonna be there and Ben Wallace is gonna be there and a bunch of YouTubers are gonna be there, it's, it's gonna be cool content. I wanna record it for me and it has nothing to do with them. So I was trying to explain that situation, but it was a lot of old guys who never really understood YouTube. Usually when I'm at the airport, I just, uh, for the boarding pass, I just click B1 for temporary business, and I'm fine. I explain the situation to customs. I've never had any issues with this before. It's the Ambassador Bridge, for whatever reason, between Windsor and Detroit, they got something against cameras. Every time I go on the Buffalo side of the border, I've never had an issue. I, I literally drove to GameStop to get VC. 
and I, I we had to DSLR our out vlogging at the time and we've never had that issue. So it's just it's just so weird the inconsistencies, but regardless. After a while, they call up Brandon from Gamer Saloon and they finally let us through after he explained, yeah, we're not getting paid. This has nothing to do with work. Stop wasting our time. We get through, we stop at the hotel. By the way, it was the biggest hotel I've ever been in. I don't know what it was. It was the uh, Motor City Casino Hotel. This shit was balling. Right, that was not how you say bye. What kind of aim does a nigga got? Yeah, we ain't sleeping here. We're literally going back to Toronto. Say bye! Right. Detroit is a unique area, man. I've never really been to a city like that before. Are those windows open? <laughs> What's wrong with no, those windows are open, bro. Well, they're not open. They're just glass. You just can't see them. No, they're gone. We saw them in the morning. What, the windows? Yeah, I the definitely know. There's no windows. What kind of sketchy place are we in? So we get to the hotel again, we get ready, we move on to the event. It's been about a thousand million issues. I, at the border, finally got through. I'm here at the event, it's a good little vibe. They got 2K running. Not gonna lie though, if they have Fortnite, I might be destroying folks. I'm here with Troy Dan. I'm here with Oli. And uh, my iPhone camera is wavy, it's a new phone. Hey, what y'all think, man? I got an iPhone. I, I skipped on the Pixel too. We got magic phones. Damn, they got, they got cheap headphones at the scores table, man. You get these at Dollarama, man. <laughs> they, have they got Dollarama headphones on, here, bro. They got man. Dollarama headphones at Scores here, bro. It's crazy, man. Damn! Damn! <laughs> Benoit, he's That's a right. stretch big now, bro. Right. <laughs> he's a he's a he's a he's a rebound in primary. Yep. He's a stretch secondary. There we go. Of course, man. <laughs> Numbers. How many shots did you take? I took uh, I don't know, none. I haven't taken a shot yet. Why not? Because I uh. Up. <laughs> yeah, try to shoot the ball for a second. Watch. Johnson, get the match. Straight Johnson on, I can hit it. Straight yeah. on. Yeah, yeah we'll Dang. do the side by side comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. We can tell the people he shoots exactly like Magic Johnson. We got ourselves a winner. Nice. Nice. I actually haven't played a five on five game on 2K this entire year. And I was curious what the meta was, but everybody was just using Giannis and LeBron running ISO on a five out. So it's basically exactly what I expected. The event was cool. At the end, we actually got a chance to talk with Ben Wallace for a bit and ask him a few questions. I'm gonna be in Orlando in April for uh, Playlist Live. Let's oh, okay. See, what date are you guys in April, uh, Orlando? Uh, it's the 12th through the 15th. <laughs> it's the 12th through the 15th. Okay, all right. And it's gonna be the first I'm offering, um, you know, grand to the winner. First cash prize ever in RC racing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I want to bring it to the forefront. I want to, you know, add cash prizes to it because. Right. Why don't you play 2K? Because it's hard for me to play with anybody else but myself. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a childhood dream, so you gotta live it to the fullest. So. Then ask people on Twitter if I could ask you one question. It's, it's a question that uh, means a lot to me. What do you think about LeVar Ball? I refuse to answer any LeVar Ball's questions. Okay, okay. You okay. okay. That's the ball. It's a game. How do you feel about Lonzo? Ain't no though, gimmick. Are you really talking to his kid? I like, Le I like Alonzo, yep. but um, he gonna have to take control of his own brand, his own destinies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't saying being disrespectful, but you gotta tell your dad he gotta sit down, man. I ain't saying being disrespectful, but you gotta protect the brand, dog. The NBA is a brand that need to be protected, and what your father doing right now, it ain't happening. Ain't wrong. Ain't wrong. So, Appreciate that. Yeah. I thought the event is over. All our all our struggles and issues are done with, right? We can just drive home and lay down and sleep in Toronto. So I don't even want to stay there for the night or wait for my flight back. I just drove back with Waleed. So I was driving the first two, three hours, and Waleed was gonna drive the rest. But the situation got so much worse because of what happened next. Okay, so here's what happened, all right? There's two lanes on the highway. Now, there's a lot of respect in Canada for the left lane, more so than America in my experience. If there's a driver and he wants to pass other vehicles, usually the trucks and the slower vehicles stay on the right lane, and then the faster vehicles stay on the left lane. It's a good, it's a good combination, it's a good friendship between all the drivers on the road. There's some truck drivers who just don't give a fuck about rules. So he cut me off. He went into the left lane driving super slow. And so I'm like, yo, I gotta pump the brakes, make sure I don't slip into anything, skid out of control or anything like that. And I'm like, I wanna pass this guy. I'm not gonna stay behind him forever. I don't know why he went on the left lane. And so I go to the right lane. And as I start to go to the right of him, I hit a patch of snow in between the lanes. 
and my car skips. But it's done that like maybe 30 or 40 times throughout the drive. It's been a blizzard for like 12 hours now. So I wasn't tripping. I just tried to regain control as fast as possible. Except this time, unlike all the other times, I fully lost control of my car. Where otherwise I would skip and ooh, I'm good. This time I skipped right and with absolutely no control, my car flung to the left. There was a truck to the left of me. That if I was, I don't know how close cause I wasn't, I wasn't doing measurements at the time. I was pretty focused on not trying to die. I could have been a feet or two away from hitting his tires and absolutely getting my car crushed. And if that happened, there's a good possibility the truck also spins out and there was a lot of other people nearby. The damage would have been collateral. And so I'm in a situation now where I'm so focused. Walid has a seatbelt on, I don't. So immediately knowing that, if the airbags deploy and I don't have my seatbelt on, I'm done. Like <laughs> I'm losing teeth, my nose is breaking, I'm getting a concussion and or I'm dead. So my car goes right, it goes left even harder and right before it hits the truck, I fucking spin that shit right off the highway. Was it a good idea? I don't know. I had no idea. I just knew I didn't want to be near this truck and almost die. The truck made zero effort to move out the way. It was, it was the most disrespectful truck I ever seen in my life. Now there's plenty of trucks that cut me off in the left lane throughout the ride, but this one didn't even make an attempt to just create some space when he fully saw my car lose control because he cut me. Now, immediately, as my car is going off the right side of the highway, I don't know what there is. There's no lights on the highway. It was a pretty dead area. It was like in the middle of nowhere. So not only was there no lights, the snow was like this thick. And I'm not exaggerating. It's been snowing for like 12 hours straight. And it's high grass. And my car is low profile tires. It had no traction. I stomped the brakes and I was shaking my way down. And immediately, of course, by the time my car started to spin, Waleed just flinched up and in what can only be described as a miracle, not only was there zero damage to the car, the airbags didn't deploy, I was fine, the lead was fine, nobody got hurt. Lead, flash the light in my face, bro. Let me get some lighting for the situation. Just, I'm gonna just film. Lead, lead, flash it in my face, flash it in my face. This truck cut me off. I was, I no, I told you slow down, the, the, literally. The truck clearly the cut me off, bro. Before. The truck cut me off, Lead. I said slow down. Lead, what do I do about the truck? So my car started to spin out. I, first of all, you don't tell nobody I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. So <laughs> by no means could I've had the airbags deploy. I would have died on this spot without my seatbelt. So I was trying so hard. Basically, we're in the middle of fucking nowhere <laughs> off the road. I f Yo, we're off the road as we speak. Uh, this is the trail I went. You can see the vehicles on that side. I went off the road and we're in this bank. How we get out this bank? Why is nobody stopping to help us? I'm clearly not on the fucking road with a car. All right, I need to get some help. What you want me to do, bro? It's my car. It can't handle the snow, bro. It can't handle the snow. I could have landed in that ditch in a myriad of other ways in which my car would have toppled over and the airbags would have definitely went off. And if the airbags went off, there is no way for me to get outside my car because there is the, the snow is so high, the door wouldn't have opened. So the lane that I went down when I flung my car off the highway was, when I tell you, it couldn't have worked out better. If I waited a little longer, I would have hit a ditch and maybe my car would have been stuck, maybe it would have flipped, I don't know. But when we looked around after the crash, I thought, what the fuck? Literally the best possible angle I took and I didn't even know I was taking it. I just got really, really lucky. Lead immediately looks at me. He goes, what the fuck, man? I told you to slow down. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Lee, just smile for a bit, bro. All right, we were okay. Nothing happened. The car is fine. We were stuck in the spot and we had to call the police. So I called the police and the police patched me over to the OPP and the OPP finally gets there. Hey, I don't know what it is, bro. The Canadian cops are some cool people, man. Well, we got a tow truck coming, so you got your driver's license on you? Yeah, did the other cop give it back? He took the license and registration. And no, I think he gave it back, right? Yeah, back? Or he gave it back. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bring this back in a second. Right, it's a little cold for shorts. I didn't think I was gonna be in this situation, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, they were super cool about the situation. They made a joke about how I was wearing shorts. I'm like, yo, I didn't expect to be in a ditch in the middle of nowhere, all right? I was in shorts because it was warm in my car. We were stuck there for like maybe an hour and a half before the tow truck finally arrived. Oh, snap! Yo, tow truck is finally here. Oh, snap. But uh, I'm gonna sell my car. 
It literally makes zero sense to have this car at this point. Not only does it have a million blind spots, which also led to a separate accident, which is for another day, is is such a liability. Literally any other car would have made a regular lane change, but I guess it wasn't even the Accord as much as it was the customizations to the car, which I didn't do, by the way. I bought the car like that, and I didn't even know the car was like that when I bought it. It just looked cool, and I was like, yeah, for that price, I will take that. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm here now, I'm back in Toronto. I'm super happy about how everything went out. I mean, I've, I've been through pretty horrible days where everything is going wrong, and this was definitely a sequence of a few days where it felt like that was happening. Anyway, uh, that's where I am right now. I kinda just wanna play Fortnite, bro. I'm sick of this, man. I just, I'm gonna kick back and play some video games, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm happy with how everything turned out. Um, but that's the story, man. It's been a crazy past few days. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new, and I'm out. Peace.